Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and um, welcome to the late one with yours truly, Silver and Sidil here. And uh, just came in bang on at 10 o'clock, bang on at 10 o'clock, which sometimes doesn't happen. I believe in time and time immoral, I mean to say that uh, it's not Jamaica time or UK time, but just but just time, yeah. And um, why I do some sharing and please share this video. I'm doing a special show tonight. Um, it's about taking the train, the plane, and flying all the way to Jamaica. <sighs> flying all the way to Jamaica because everything is not about Brexit. Everything is not about elections. But yet at the same time, I'm going to talk about elections. Elections in regarding something very important as well as possible. You know. Um, I believe what I'm going to talk about is, is something which has a very fundamental relevance. And the relevance is when you think about things like the wind rush, when you think about the level of representation in um, a foreign land away from the land of your birth, sometimes when you have effective representation and effective structures, things like the wind rush fiasco don't happen again, and things like whereby there's lack of empathy lack of understanding of certain things um, don't happen because there's something which we call representation and that is something which is very important right <clears throat> now of course in the UK we're still on regarding the elections and um, I will come back again at some other time and talk about the latest on the election but tonight I'm going to talk about the diaspora yeah I'm talking about the diaspora I'm talking about the UK um arm of the jamaica diaspora and and in regards to the something which is important which is called the global jamaica diaspora council the global jamaica diaspora council but um just say hi um where you from and uh let me know if you have come on specifically for this uh, i put the notice out earlier i'm gonna invite dr kevin brown at some point uh we did a test yesterday and the test works, so we hope that it works as well tonight. Um, or else I'll be, you know, uh, I won't have many words to say. And I'll have to jump onto a different thing. I'll just read the things that I have, you know. But um, but what i love for you to do as well is to somewhat um, to share this video and just to say hello. And, um, and while I just do some, um, you know, do some housekeeping here by as well you know like sharing the video to um a, a few other persons as well that would be good and um and kevin if you're there just say hello and um let me know if you're there as well that would be um fantastic good well you know the the elections in the uk is is still going on i've been watching um up and down today i've been watching um developments i i've been posting different things i've been posting things which are one-sided that somebody one time said to me do you only post things from one side i say yes i only post things from one side because it's an election and of course when you election you want a particular party to win so therefore i will post things from one side because i'm not a news broadcaster I'm still burned with my perspective as much as possible. So until the election is finished for, for the UK election, you're going to see a lot of political postings which are happening. So so that's 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 one of the good things, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, you know, while, while I'm talking about this, I was, I was reading something about my, my... While I'm on the Jamaica... Hi, Kevin, how are you? Um, Kevin, if you can do that invite thing, see if you press that thing and see if you can invite yourself and let me see if it works while at the same time i'll bring you on at the right time but i go to a i went to a, a school called york castle in brownstown in jamaica my my classmate uh, raymond treasure is is also the principal at present and what has been happening is that there's been some spate of um what should i say some robbery and they're holding up um young students you know uh, which which is not really um which is not really good so uh <clears throat> So, so because of that, I, I've just been thinking about it, it is really unfortunate that you have a situation where children are going to school and um, they are being held up by, you know, gunmen or whatever like that, robbing them, you know, and, and that is not good. 
Now, <clears throat> I know like in the UK sometimes, yeah, where you got schools, you might have teachers and you may have as well, you know, different, like a body of teachers and, and, and also, you know, you know, parents do some sort of, what, what should I say, uh, a sort of patrol. And this sort of patrol is sort of looking to see how they can monitor the children going to school at a certain time now this is in brownstown and browns and it is next to york york castle is just up the top there st hilda's is there and um and i saw my 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 classmate and uh pres principal of york castle high school raymond treasure really disheartened by the, the the children being held up which is really and very unfortunate so i think one of the good ways to, to rectify that is to have some sort of parent and uh and, and and teachers alliance along with maybe some security guard or whatever like that in order to somehow in order to somehow um what should i say you know get the the young students them to be safe going to school and i think that is something which which should happen which is really unfortunate you know and today i was watching something on um on reported world with with the uk there um they were doing something on bbc uh, I think it's just Africa there where but you have um, young, 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 uh, sorry, let me just do something here. Hi, Kevin, how are you? Let me just do something here. I can see. Kevin, can you hear me? Hello? I can, yes. You, you can hear me? Okay, fantastic. I just heard some local background there. Yeah. So yeah, so we had that situation there where in Africa, in South Africa, you have in the, in the township, you got the little boy was, um, you know, really sad story there that even the reporter was really sad about it, whereby involved with all these gangs, you know, but anyway, Kevin, good evening. How are you, sir? Hi, good evening, Silburn. I'm fine. Thanks. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, tonight, I'm going to be um, talking about the diaspora global um the diaspora global council the global jamaica diaspora council and i have dr kevin brown phd M -A -M -E -N -G, hans a m i m e c h e um from jamaica in the land of wood and water uh, is there more more to that um in the uk <laughs> i'm just putting all, all the different <laughs> titles there you know Kevin born and well, up I, I I I stayed in university for a long time, uh, so for my <laughs> sins, I accumulated a, a few qualifications. Yeah, yeah. Um, lived in northern northern Midlands of UK for the last nineteen years, even though it looks like twenty. So I don't know how that works. You know, <laughs> grandparents were part of the Windrush generation, living in Yorkshire from the nineteen fifties. Let's let's make a point there. We're gonna go into the Windrush thing there. Um, you know, I mentioned it a while ago. While the, the power of the diaspora can ensure that things like the Windrush thing fiasco don't happen again. Um, Kevin Provision is an engineer and project lead for Global, Global Aerospace Company and the host of a local radio take radio talk show in Nottingham, which is Kemet. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yes, ninety-seven point five Kemet FM radio point, in Nottingham. Yes, yes. I've been privileged to be there a couple of times. I'm very passionate about the Jamaica diaspora community in the UK, and I've held leadership position in several Jamaican community organizations over the last 15 years, um, giving experience and knowledge of the key issues that affect the Jamaica diaspora in the UK. Kevin is actually now the current chair of the board of the Jamaica diaspora UK, JD UK, which is a national organization that seeks to protect the interests of Jamaicans in the UK through JD UK. He has been actively engaged in bringing issues that affect the diaspora to the attention of the Jamaican government, including justice for Windrush, immigration, deportation, safety of returning residents, national diaspora policy, youth engagement, and improved Jamaica government services for the diaspora. If elected, which we'll talk about, he will serve with integrity and be a strong voice in a global Jamaica diaspora council, taking your issues to the heart of the Jamaica government and other stakeholders. Kevin, welcome. How are you, sir? And um, Thank how you. is Nottingham? Good night. <laughs> Nottingham is cold and wet. <laughs> cold and wet. Yeah. Yes, these these are the times when you wish you were actually back in Jamaica, you know, with the sunshine. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, well, it, it's um, it's sort of wet outside there as well, you know. Um, 
on the motorway earlier today, so it was sort of wet. It's like it's like that time of the year now. By four o'clock, it gets dark, you know. <laughs> Cats yes, and dogs yes. and bodies in, you know. Um, Kevin, the Global Diaspora uh, Council, yeah. Global yes. Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. Tell us what what is that? What what is the Global Jamaica Diaspora for benefit of um, our viewers? Well, the, the Global Diaspora. Well, the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council um, is a is a new governance structure um, that the Jamaican government is introducing mm -hmm. as as a, as a as a way of improving um, engagement between the Jamaican diaspora uh, and diaspora here means Jamaicans who live outside of Jamaica. Yes. Um, and so uh, you know uh, there are approximately three million. Jamaicans who live outside of Jamaica. That's about the outside same number of people who yeah. live there. So um, it's a significant so number of people. Um, these Jamaicans send home um, over two billion US dollars per year to Jamaica. Yes. Um, so they make a significant financial contribution to the country. And they also invest in Jamaica as well, you know, whether it's buying properties or um, you know, opening businesses, etc. Um, so the diaspora is very important, and the government um, uh, acknowledges this, um, uh, and uh, they have decided to um, improve the way they engage with the community by setting up um, this uh, Jamaica Global Diaspora Council. Now, the council <coughs> uh, will have 20, 28 members, mm. um, and it will be um, comprised of... Um, Jamaicans who live um, in various parts of the world. Um, so previously what we had uh, was an advisory board, but the advisory board only um, consisted of representatives from three countries, yes. uh, the UK, Canada, and America. And, and these countries, of course, have the vast majority of Jamaicans who live outside of Jamaica. Yes. Uh, but but of course we know <laughs> that Jamaicans live everywhere. Yes. Um, uh, you know I'm sure even in Iceland <clears throat> you would find Jamaicans. Yeah. So um, you know I Telling think there, the there is a... <laughs> <laughs> indeed yes. <laughs> so I think in in in, in acknowledging this fact, um, the council uh, is is going to have representatives from uh, Europe, yes, Africa, the Caribbean. Uh, uh, Asia and the Pacific. Um, there, it will also have um, youth representatives. Yes, as well, um, and there'll also be um, what I call sort of technical specialists. So, so people who will be appointed to the board um, to to focus on specific topics such as education, um, um, health, uh, and faith. And, and so on. Yes. So, so the new so the new council will comprise of twenty eight members, um, and it will be chaired by the um, minister for foreign foreign affairs and foreign trade, um, and but there'll also be a vice chair who will be um, uh, selected or or elected yeah. from amongst the twenty eight members that make up the council. The secretariat of the council will be at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, in uh, Jamaica. And essentially what it is, it's going to be a sort of consultative body, um, um, first and foremost. Yes. But also it will be a communication vehicle, allowing Jamaicans in the diaspora to take their issues directly to the government through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, and vice versa for the ministry to um, communicate um, with us, communicate with the diaspora through the representatives who sit on, on the council. If I if, no. if I if I can stop you there, um, if if we if we just go back a bit because it is the it is a successive it is a successor body to the diaspora advisory board which comprises members of course as you say Canada, UK and USA. But for purpose of persons who might not know, where where did the the start of the diaspora came from or what was the the mission behind okay. it? Because I because what we are seeing is an sure. is a is an evolving process, isn't it? It does evolve over the years. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, um, yes. So, where did this start? Well, back in 2004, um, the government at the time um, decided that they wanted to engage with the diaspora. Um, 
uh, in a more structured way. Yes. And so they called a conference in Jamaica and invited Jamaicans to attend the conference. Um, and, and, and so fr from that conference um, began the diaspora project, if you like. Yes. And, and so um, the, the, the framework for what we have started in 2004. Yes. Um, and, and so delegates were essentially asked to go back to their home countries, mm -hmm. um, primarily Canada, America, and the UK, and to create organizations um, and, and, um, that would facilitate a, a structured um, approach to, to engagement with the government. Yes. Um, and, and, and so in the UK, um, we created what's called the Jamaican Diaspora UK, yes. which is a national organization um, that I, I currently chair, yes. um, you know, and, and the mission statement really is to protect the interests of Jamaicans living in the UK, but also to assist in nation building um, back home. And, and so um, JD UK, uh, as it's called, has been around um, since around 2005. Um, and then at the same time, um, the, the, the government created the Jamaica Advisory Board, um, um, and that advisory board comprised of seven representatives, two from the United Kingdom, um, three from the United States, and two from Canada. Yes. Um, but of course, as we've just mentioned, this advisory board is now going to be replaced by uh, a Jamaica, a global Jamaica diaspora council, which will comprise of 28 members. So it's quite an expansion there, and one that I welcome because, as I said. You know, um, the diaspora uh, um, certainly, you know, reaches beyond the UK, Canada and America. And I think it's only fair and right to have a more global representation. I... Um, the other thing I, the other thing I, I, I would say, Silborn, is that the, the council um, is, is, is just part of a wider Jamaica uh, diaspora national policy. Yes. Right. The, this is what I would call sort of part of the governance structure. But there is a policy um, that, that has been developed by the government um, and that we are quite keen to see ratified and implemented, which will, which will actually dictate um, you know, the, the policies and procedures um, as it relates to how the government uh, will treat members of the diaspora. So um, that, that policy is also something that I would encourage everyone to familiarize themselves with and it is a public document it is um, it is available online um, primarily through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade uh, but also um, it should be on the website of the Jamaican High Commission in London mm -hmm. their website also has a copy okay well well what we have now and what I understand is that we in the UK we have the general election coming up um, December the 12th at the same time you are in the process of um, being running for the post on this council. And there's this election process which is happening. And one of the reasons why I brought you on, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin, is for him to tell us some more about this election process, this nomination, and then we're gonna go into a bit further once we sort of set out that stage as to the benefit of the diaspora than just, um, uh, not, not to be seen as a talk shop, but, the, the fundamental benefit of it. So if you tell us about this election, which is coming up now, where people can get involved with Kevin, yes. Right, okay. So we're having elections because um, as with the, the advisory board, the new um, global council um, will also have a combination, will, uh, will also have elected representatives. Um, in fact, this is a, quite a distinction because the advisory board previously only had elected representatives, the council will have a combination of elected and appointed. Yes. And what the government has decided to do is that um, Jamaicans in the diaspora will still elect uh, representatives in America, Canada, and the UK because, uh, first of all, these are more mature uh, and large diaspora populations. Yes. And so they, they've decided to try and uh, apply a more democratic process. Yes. Um, but, but, but representatives from other countries um, or continents uh, will be appointed in the first instance. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the representatives from Africa, Europe, uh, the Pacific and the Caribbean 
will be appointed um, by the government. Um, and as I said, there'll also be appointees to uh, technical areas such as health, education, arts, sports, culture, um, and so on. So 14, and by the way, so all 14, this information... So 14 um, elected mm, and 14 appointed. Yeah. Correct, yes. Mm. And, of, so, uh, and so the, uh, of that 14, you have youth, reps, youth representatives as well. Um, but, uh, but again, um, the youth representatives will be appointed in, the fir in this first instance. Yes. Um, but I think in time to come, uh, you know, perhaps in, in, um, at the next elections, the, the young people will also have to vie in the elections. But I think because this is the first time they're setting up the council, yes. they've decided to um, appoint young people. Because what I haven't mentioned is that there is also, uh, there are, the government is also introducing a very new um, uh, organization called the Global Jamaica Diaspora Youth Council. Okay, there's a youth council to mirror the. <laughs> there is a youth council. Yes, yes. So that's that's and that is and we're currently in the genesis of that. So yeah. you know we've never had that before, and that is a new thing. And 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 members of that youth council will sit on this uh, global council. So 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 it's you know so there's a lot <clears throat> happening there. But you you asked me about the election. Yeah, the timeline, um, the timeline so, so, for it. Yes, and everything. Like yes, that. yeah. So, so sp specific to the elections um, in the UK, the UK... Uh, uh, so, sorry, needs... I, I need to stop there. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who are coming in, he's talking about the Jamaica Diaspora Global Ca Diaspora Council elections, not the general election which is happening in the UK. We'll make that distinction there. So people are wondering, what is it that Jamaica have to do with this particular election? <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh so, my God. Yes. Just... I can imagine, right? Yeah. And 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 this is the thing, right? There's so much happening at the moment uh, in this country. Never mind yes. uh, the diaspora trying to have um, elections. So I hope people are able to sort of follow what's going on because it it is a a different election. It's yes. an election for in the UK. You're you're we are electing two representatives for um the um for the global jamaica diaspora council yes. so we're not electing people for the general elections yes. um you know uh, that's a separate thing and and um and so what you have is you'll have a representative for the north and you have a representative for uh this the south yes um and and so um the 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 north actually covers the east and West Midlands, it covers um, Northern Ireland, Scotland, and the, the Isle of Man. Yes, um, and of course the North of England. Um, so, 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 uh, so that's very important that we know the regions, and then the South, of course, will will be e everything else south of of, of the Midlands. Um, and so, I am running for um, to be the UK North uh, representative, um, and there are other people I'm sure who will be running. Um, for the south, um, so we we currently we currently have two representatives who who won't be seeking re-election um, in in the north. Um, the, the current uh, well advisory board member no council um, is Professor Cecile Wright, and in the south we have Fitzroy Grant. Um, but but of course they they have been in post for quite some time and, and won't be seeking okay. uh, re-election. Okay. Okay, so 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 therefore, so therefore, what we have now, we have nominations. You got it. You, you got some nominations. Yes. So so in terms of the mechanics of this, yes, let's get down to the mechanics. So so now, so registration is open, and if you if you want if you'd like to vote, um, you have to be registered. So that's the key thing. You have to register, and and primarily they'd like people to register online, but if you can't, then you can ask for a postal registration and postal vote. Um, so you need to go to the website um, Global J A Diaspora Council dot com. So that's Global J A Diaspora Council dot com, yeah. and all the information is there. You can then register on that website, um, and the registration process is quite straightforward. Mm. And it will, in terms of you being able to vote, um, that will be dictated by your postcode. So once you put your postcode in, then the system will, will, uh, will, will sort of automatically dictate whether you can vote for the north or for the south. 
um, and you will receive an email response uh, to confirm that you have registered. So it's very straightforward. Okay. Uh, there's very little information that's required. Uh, um, you know, primarily your name, address, email, uh, email address, postal address, and I and and also it will ask you um, your link to Jamaica because you have to be Jamaican or of Jamaican heritage. Yeah. So you know, Jamaican by birth or by heritage. You know, so. You know, you probably, can, probably can born I, can, here. Can I just ask? This, can I just ask this question? Um, uh, because, like, when registering, it is asking for your your address and all those details. Yeah. And you know, people are always sort of wary. Let's deal with this question. What if a person say, always oh, keeping those address because you're wanting the postcode? Someone men mentioned to me, why not just take my yeah. birth certificate, if anything? Um, and yeah. who's going to keep that that information? Uh, where is it going to be kept? Who's as far as I'm aware, that's a that's a good question. Yeah, as as far as I'm aware, Silburn, the the um the information is being kept by um the, elect, the electoral committee. So there's quite a bit here to go through. So the election is actually being handled by an electoral committee. Yes. That has been put together by the Jamaican High Commission, um, in the UK. So, so this committee is meant to be independent and they're just there to undertake the running of the election. And by the way, the election is happening globally. So, so the same dates that, and deadlines for registering and for voting um, apply in Canada and the United States as well. Yeah. And as far as I'm aware, the information is only being used by the electoral committee and it will only be used for the elections. But, so after the elections, that's it. Your data will not be used for anything else. Okay, yeah, because I saw a fact sheet which saying, how long will the data collected be stored? And it says information collected during registration will be held up to the end of the election yes. process. Yeah? Yes. Right, so, so therefore people can feel assured that is the end of the... So therefore, it, that information which they have on persons their 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 um address will be will be dis destroyed by the yes. fifteenth of by after the fifteenth of December because that's when the voting when when is the date of the election? Um when it when is it completed? I see fifteenth of December, is that correct? Yes. Yes, those the, the key the key date dates are that registration is ongoing now and in fact closes on Sunday. Now, I know people have been asking the Electoral Committee to extend the date, but let us just assume that the deadline is still Sunday. For the registration. I have not received it for the registration. And if you're not registered to vote, you can't vote. So, you know, even if you don't know who you're going to vote for, hopefully you'll vote for me if you're in the North. <laughs> yeah. But even if you're not sure who you're going to vote for, the key thing is to at least, um, you know, have the right to do that if you yeah. choose to exercise it. And so I, I'd strongly encourage everyone, just register to vote. Even if, you know, whatever your decision is in the end, to vote or not to, at least register. Right. So at least, uh, you know, the opportunity is there. And that closes on the 17th of November, which is Sunday. But as I said, we are, we are you know, people have asked, including myself, for an extension uh, to the registration process. Um, but I'm, I'm yet to receive a positive response from the Electoral Committee on that. Um, I, so... After um, the registration closes, yes. um, nominations are also being taken currently as well for anyone who wants to run. And when nomination closes, which is on Sunday, um, then they will publish the list of candidates. Yes. And, um, and then it, the election, the period of for people to actually vote is from the 21st of November to the 15th of December. Quite a long voting period. Um, so, oh, so um, yeah, twenty first of November to the fifteenth of December, they get vote. Yes, yes. Yeah. and 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 so if you registered online, then you, what you need to do is look out for an email with your ballot, because if you registered online, then the system assumes that you're going to vote online, and so your voting paper, will, your voting will be done through 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 um, the internet. Yeah. So um, when it, when the voting period opens up opens up on the twenty first of yes. November. Please check your emails <laughs> just to, to, to look out for your ballot to, to vote. So just so just to now, so just to recap for persons now, if you want to take part in the process of voting for the diaspora rep representative for the council, 
uh, yeah. you got to have your registration in by the 17th of November. What I did, Kevin, while we were here, I typed the the website, which is global ja diaspora council dot com. Yes, yes, diaspora council dot com. So it is there. I just posted that so persons can do that, and then thank you. And then after the vote, then the publication of the final voters list will be the twentieth of November, where all of you can vote for Kevin. <laughs> you know, if you're in the north. Yeah. And uh, 20th of November, publication of final slate of candidates for election. This is working at the same time as in the States, isn't it? Because my good friend... David, yes, yes. Got David, all, yeah, all these dates. Yeah, because David Mullins have, have put out a, a, a video as well, um, encouraging persons to vote for him in, in the States because... Uh, in the I United mean, States, yeah. I mean, you, you, you must be aware that um, in the initial stage of the diaspora movement, I was involved with that with David and Marlon Hill and even the yeah. guy who actually led the Jamaica Stock Exchange. I forget his name. We all were at the initial conference and we've been back to back and forth to Jamaica. Um, you know, sure. going through the we're like the pioneers, if anything, in the UK, but <laughs> different Yes, well, <laughs> yeah, and I re I recall because I mean I was I was involved back back then as well. Yes. Um but as a youth leader. Yes. You know, uh, and I'm thinking to myself, gosh, where did all the years go? Yes. Um, you know, because I, I was one of the first youth leaders of the Jamaican diaspora. But I, I recall you were you were involved. You were once a public relations officer yes, at yes, one yes. point. Um, so you know, so you definitely were um, a, a big part of the diaspora the, uh, movement until you, you know, well, you've now gone into media and um, and and uh, you know doing doing big and better things. Yes. But um, but yes, we've come a, a, a long way, and I've certainly been involved in the diaspora project. Uh, for a long time, firstly as a, a youth leader, I, I was the president of the, the Jamaica Diaspora Youth Association. Yeah. So, Kevin, um, yeah. I, I, so Kevin, what I want to, what I really want to do, uh, persons always talk about the diaspora. What is the benefit of it? It is just a talk shop. Lisa Hannah recently mentioned it is. Is it being politicized um, when these things happen? I remember Delano Franklin was the key architect there when he said that. Uh, uh, Rome wasn't built in one day, and uh, in in Israel, the Jews, the diaspora movement over many years, and we are just in yes. a few years in comparison. But in, in light of the wind rush, if 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 you got a big structure like this, how could something like this avert things like the wind rush fiasco? What is the impact of the Jamaica diaspora in the UK? Because with the wind rush. What we saw happening was the the government ministers, the prime ministers, Andrew Hollis, coming to the UK and putting that pressure. Shouldn't we, from this side, be able to put that pressure on to ensure that something like this don't happen again? What would be the strength of the diaspora than just Jamaica? Yeah. yeah. No, no, I think the diaspora has a big, big role to play. I mean, first of all, um, you know the 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 you know it, it was quite a horrendous um, thing to see, uh, you know the Windrush immigration scandal occur to Jamaicans who have some of whom have lived in this country uh, for over forty years, who suddenly found that they were disenfranchised, and uh, and their their immigration status um, you know called into question, yes. which then uh, meant that some people lost their jobs, lost their homes. And, and their benefits and, and, and you know this was a, a real uh, tra travesty yeah. um, of course we, we, we have seen the government um, apologize and we now have a compensation scheme that is currently ongoing and I would encourage all Jamaicans who have been affected by Windrush immigration scandal to apply for compensation it's, it's really really important and it's certainly something that I have been campaigning on yeah. so um, in terms of what we, 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 we could do, I think we could, we, we could and have been doing a lot um, since this, um, uh, this, this situ situation occurred. The first thing that we have been doing, Silburn, is that we have been encouraging all Jamaicans to regularize their status. We have been working quite closely with the Jamaican High Commission to encourage Jamaicans to apply for residency where they qualify. You know, don't just, um, you know, uh, assume that the immigration um, uh, policies will remain the same. They keep changing and yeah. unfortunately they, be, they keep getting harsher. So if you qualify to, to, to get your residency in the UK, apply for it. I, uh, that's I, the first I, thing. I, want, I want to stop you right there because 
online now. I don't know if she's still there, but Ambassador Asamba was the High Commissioner. She's online now and she's actually watching um, High Ambassador. Uh, she has been, she was, when she was Ambassador um, here, High Commissioner, she went up and down the UK, as you remember, and telling people to get themselves regularized, get themselves regularized, you know. Sure. I've done, done a, a two part, I think maybe a, a one, a, one and a half hour show with her. Um, before she left, but she was very key in in getting that sort of message out there, which is what the diaspora, which what you what yes and, and yes absolutely and so that's that's key. But I think what we'd like to see happen, Silburn, yes. is is not just not, is of course it's important for the diaspora and and for diaspora organizations to lobby for immigration rights in the UK. Yes. But what we would like to see, and this is one of the things that uh, I would, why I'm running to be a member of the council, yes. is, is I'd, like, I'd like the Jamaican government also to, to take more responsibility in protecting the rights of Jamaicans. You know, I, think, I think the Jamaican government for too long have, have sort of left us to our host countries. Uh, and, and and sort of left us to the to the whims and fancy of 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 of, of our host countries in terms of their immigration policies. Yes. I, I I what we would like to see is the Jamaican government ensuring that they are also playing an oversight role in in terms of um you know uh, the, keeping uh, foreign governments accountable Country. for Jamaican citizens. You know um and and so as you as you as you pointed out. When the Windrush scandal broke, um, it, we were uh, fortunate enough, because I don't think it was by design, yes. we were fortunate enough that we were having the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in London at the same time. Yes. And so the Jamaican Prime Minister was in town, and as, this, as the scandal broke, um, you know, he, he was swept up in that wave and, uh, and spoke out. Um, you know, against the injustices, and and of course was was on, um, in the mass in the mainstream media, yes. um, you know, defending the rights of Jamaicans. And what we want to see, uh, Silburn, is for that to be normalized, mm. not for the Jamaican government to have a one-off, um, you know, uh, thing around Windrush. We want to see it normal. If a Jamaican citizen is is impeded or affected by by the immigration rules. In not just the UK, but anywhere they are, we would like to see the Jamaican government making sure uh, that that Jamaica, uh, that Jamaican rather, has has a has a, a fair hearing yes. and is has access to due process. Mm. You know, don't you know? I I always say to people, you know, ask yourself the question: If you were an American, what would the American government do? Yes, and we all know the answer, right? Yeah. If you are an American living outside of America. And you fall into difficulty. Yes. We all know that the American government has the policy of what no American what left behind. Yes. We want the Jamaican government to have the same policy. Yes. No Jamaican left behind. Now that 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 is very important there uh, because uh, I mean we, we have seen the time when that that Brazilian was shot and killed um, by mistake yes. after seven seven. And remember the ambassadors and Brazilian people came and they speak up about it officially. When, I mean, in Jamaica, for argument's sake, when the Chinese were having some sort of extortion and stuff like that, when the Chinese, uh, the Chinese complained to their Chinese government and the Chinese government acted and tried to do what they can do to rectify the situation for the Chinese in Jamaica. So therefore you're right, while at the same time there's a responsibility upon the people within the country, because for argument's sake, um, you've got Jamaicans who are here, who are citizens, who can operate through the normal process. I'm, I'm seeing different persons. You've got Don Butler, you've got Diane Abbott, you've got Janet Davey, you've got Marsha, um, whatever, Dakova. A lot of people are getting involved in politics whereby the diaspora, yeah. if those areas are harnessed as well, and this is something I want to say mm -hmm. to you, is that with the level of Jamaicans or ancestry involved in politics, are they being brought to the table in some sort of strategic way as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, look, you know, it, it is to be, it is to be, you know, it is to celebrate the fact that we have, um, you know, MPs of Jamaican heritage 
in the British Parliament. You know, I, I think it's a good thing. And, and certainly we want to see more because uh, there is still a le level of underrepresentation of black and minority ethnic um, groups in, in Parliament. Yes. Um, you know, so you mentioned Don Butler, um, Diane Abbott and, and others who, you know, who have been outspoken. David Lamy in particular yes. has been very outspoken um, as it relates to the, uh, uh, the Windrush scandal, um, you know. And and that's and that and that's what we want to see um, on a consistent uh, basis, you know. So you know, so that uh, everyone will know that look, if 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 there's a Jamaican out there in in the diaspora uh, who falls into difficulty, who you know who who faces certain injustices, uh, there are uh, leaders who will uh, who will speak up for them, uh, whether it is a a, a, a or, as I've been saying before, the Jamaican government themselves. Yes. Um, so, so that's what we'd like to see. And, and, and so, you know, that's why it's important for us to have representation uh, at all levels in, in this yes. society. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got um, Dr. Kevin Brown, um, from, who is one of the um, nominees and who's putting himself forward to, for the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council for the election, which is 25th of October to the 17th of November. I love for you to share this video as well. Share it if you're on. Just share the video as well, and let us have some more conversation about this. We spoke about the different timelines, which I'll come back to before I leave, and set it out as to the timelines for the election and the registration. But what we're getting into is that for people to really get into involved with these things, Kevin, people have got to understand what does it, how can it benefit me, or how can I use it to benefit my people. Um, so we're digging more into the benefit of being involved with the Jamaica diaspora than to, yeah. so we can stamp out the, the perception and the stereotypical argument sometimes that it's in a talk show. Jamaica Stock Exchange, it is the number one performer worldwide, right? What is yeah. the, how, I, 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 that is one. And also the Chinese and the Spanish and everybody is investing in Jamaica, buying up Jamaica. Is there some yeah. plan afoot whereby the Jamaica diaspora collectively, um, the leadership is encouraging persons to buy out Jamaica and don't let the Chinese and all those buy out Jamaica. Yeah, right? definitely. I mean, you know, uh, the, the, the Jamaican diaspora, in terms of remittances, sends home over $2 uh, billion US dollars to Jamaica, yes. right? Significant amount of money. And what uh, we have been saying, um, and also the Jamaican government have been echoing the same um, uh, thoughts, is that we should now sort of um, look at how we can use that money as a, uh, for investments. Yes. So typically, when Jamaicans send home remittances, it's for welfare. You know, it's for mommy or daddy or friends or family to buy food or pay rent or, you know, it's, it's more welfare. Yes. And what we're asking Jamaicans to do now is to make that transition from just sending home remittances for welfare and, and instead using that money uh, for investments, buying property, mm. um, investing in the stock exchange. I mean, you know, as you said, Jamaica has one, uh, currently the best performing stock exchange in the world. So buy Jamaican stocks, support uh, Jamaican governments or set up businesses in Jamaica you know um, they, there are still opportunities there to do to do business um, you know agriculture being um, a, a prime example yes. where where you know Jamaicans are being encouraged to to, to do, go into farming uh, and of course the Jamaican government wants to wants to repurpose for example cane lands you know that are not being used so so I, I think it's very important because guess what? You know, if we don't do it, then you will forever see other people investing in Jamaica, such as the Chinese. Yeah. And then when the Chinese comes to invest, we complain. Yeah. But if we don't invest, then somebody, the government needs investors. And if the, if the government cannot get Jamaicans to invest, then, then other people will take that opportunity. But I think a, a key point here, though, Silburn, is one of trust. Mm. Because as you may be aware, there are a couple of corruption cases um, currently unfolding in Jamaica. And so I think that uh, if the government would like uh, Jamaicans to invest in the country, then we need to also see stronger measures around curtailing corruption yeah. so as to 
give um you know give 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 people uh, a bit more faith in terms of investing in the country and, and feeling uh, uh, comfortable that the money will be put to good, to good use, use. Yeah. so 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 there are there are those challenges that need to be overcome but Jamaica is yours and I would encourage everyone to mm. make sure they, they own a piece of the rock yeah and 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 ladies and gentlemen just as Kevin was talking about uh, one of the things that I'm going to do and check out as well and Kevin we're going to look to see uh how Jamaicans overseas here of course can um get involved in investing in the stock market I know the, the UK system tend to monitor people where the money that they're using going, you know what I mean, at the same time, you know. But sure. um, but at the end of the day, one must find some way how to build home because I always say, as you remember, I did that video when people were saying, don't go back to Jamaica because they're killing off Jamaicans. And uh, when, you have the info well, yes. when you have the unfortunate case where, where people are being killed and, uh, you know, these things do happen, but not one or not any of them to be condoned. But I made it very clear that one has got to somehow live and remember where you come from. Because if anything happened in the UK, where are you going to go? Yeah, okay. well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, you've got Brexit. But I wanted to touch on it because one of the things that I, I, I'm also, why I'm, I'm campaigning on is safety for returning residents. And you spoke about criminality in Jamaica. Yes. No, uh, you know, sadly, um, you know, we we saw especially i think last year you know quite a few um jamaican diasporans uh lose their lives mm. in uh jamaica i think the most unfortunate one but more most well known uh was, was when uh the couple were murdered this, this is a couple who used to live in manchester yes england but returned home and unfortunately uh were killed um and then we we've, we've seen other uh, Jamaicans um, who who uh, have returned home um, killed as well. I mean, crime affects all Jamaicans. Yes, you know. Um, so you know, we, we're not just saying that uh, only people in the diaspora should receive some sort of special treatment. Yes. Uh, what we want is a comprehensive crime fighting plan yes. for everyone, yeah. Jamaicans and those in the diaspora. Because, as you know, Silver, there are many Jamaicans. Who are here and have been here for a long time um, with the sole dream and aspiration of returning home to sunny Jamaica yeah. to live out their twilight days and so they should and they should not uh, have a, any fear in going back to their country yes and so uh, I, I, what we what, what one of the things that I certainly would be you know uh, put into the, the council and to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Jamaican government by extension is is the need for a comprehensive crime fighting plan yes uh, that is that is long term and sustainable but but more importantly effective you know um you know we we need to catch and prosecute criminals um you know that's that's what that's one of the things uh, that seems uh, problematic we're not, we're not catching them we're not prosecuting them and crime just seems to be spiraling yes and and i think uh, the, the idea of using states of emergency um, uh, as a long-term crime-fighting measure is, is perhaps not uh, uh, the appropriate thing to do. Um, so, so, so that's, that's, that's going to be key. You know, we want to see, not just the government, we want to see what's the crime-fighting plan from the opposition yes. parties as well. You know, we, you know what, what, what is the strategy going forward? And unfortunately, nobody has presented anything to date. What we do know mm. is that the government is trying to pump more money into the police force, yes. but clearly, um, just throwing cash at the problem uh, is is not the, uh, a solution. In Kevin, one of, Kevin, one of the, the things though that always comes up each time with this diaspora is when one government is in power, the other one somewhat feel disenfranchised in a sense by saying they are controlling the diaspora; it's being politicized. Will the yeah. With, with the leadership now, with the 14 and the other 14 making it 28, yes. I think one of the charge would be that the emphasis should ensure that even though the minister with responsibility is of a particular party, to ensure that the, the other side is also at the table, you know, to make sure that there is this level of um, yeah. balance to, to, to rid this sort of 
stereotypical thinking that it is a politicized thing because at the end of the day, everybody has political leanings, you know, but at the end of the day, Jamaica has got to be the top priority. So I think that is one of the charges that I would actually charge yes, you, I... another person to really take that, take that initiative to lead because many times they said it was the Jamaica government leading the way <laughs> with the diaspora. Well, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, and look, that, that has been a concern. And in fact, that has been an issue or a concern since the Diaspora Project started, if we could call it a project. Yes. Um, it started in earnest in 2004. And that has always been a concern in terms of making sure that the Diaspora, uh, especially Diaspora organizations, are non-aligned. Yes. You know, and, 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 and are sort of apolitical. They're not involved or, or linked to any political our persuasion, yeah. color, or flag, yeah. and um, and I, and I think I think that that is um, the the still the the, des the desired position going forward. Now, uh, some people have raised concerns that um, whereas in the past all the representatives were elected, now you have with this council um, the opportunity for the minister to appoint. Yes, right. And that appointment sits with the minister, um, you know, so, so we, nobody else uh, has the final say on these appointees. Uh, one would assume that the minister will consult, right, um, in terms of finding, out, finding appropriate appointees. But nonetheless, it's the minister's call. And so there are concerns uh, that have been raised. Yes. Um, and and, and this, this has been um, echoed across um, the diaspora landscape. Um, that there's a risk that you know uh, the, the minister um, might might um, might might perhaps lean in one direction, uh, but but uh, you know I I think we have to trust the process, um, and I'm sure the minister is aware of the need for balance and parity. Yes. And uh, you know we we will we will have to trust the process and um, and hope that um, people are appointed on on merit. Uh, rather than political affiliation. So, so what I'm seeing then, um, Kevin and ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a vehicle which started from 2004, and it is evolving over the years. But yeah. normally, Kevin, and you know this, when the prime minister comes around and the minister comes around, and they have a community meeting, everybody congregate, congregate, and this big massive convocation, and they start to ask all these questions. Now, it would be so great now that with this structure which is in place and being developed to the next level, that you don't have to wait for the Prime Minister to come down. That, Precisely. That people can now have that form where they have that confidence that the information will be cascaded down to Jamaica. Is that what we're talking about, Kevin? Yes. And, and, and Silburn, you've hit the nail on the head because essentially that's what this is all about fundamentally, yes. right? And, 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 you know, it's about communication. It's about you as a Jamaican uh, being able to raise an issue, um, whatever that issue may be, whether it is, you, you have a piece of land in Jamaica and you're struggling to get um, your, your title or, yes. your, or engage with a government agency, someone to speak to. You should be able to Go speak ahead. to your representative on the council and your council, your council member should be able to um, take that concern to the government, you know, or take that concern to the High Commission in London on your behalf. Yes. Um, and, and so I found it really, um, you know, refreshing uh, on the campaign trail because I've been all, all over campaigning, you know, mm -hmm. Nottingham, Birmingham, Preston. Um, I'm in Huddersfield on the weekend. Um, yes. You know, and, and, and I've been having this opportunity to meet um, Jamaicans and to really understand their concerns. So, for example, when I was in Preston, you know, a la uh, this this uh, lady was telling me that um, you know, take the issue of flights to Jamaica. Mm. Now that we no longer have our beloved Air Jamaica flying, um, people in the north of England, unfortunately, have this very long trip that they have to make. Yes. Um, to London, whether it's Heathrow or Gatwick, in order to get a direct flight to Jamaica. Yes. Right? Um, you know, we, so we have airports in Manchester that can take international flights. 
but we do not have any international flights, direct flights to Jamaica. I think with the exception of one airline, but there's a restriction in terms of the length of time you can spend in Jamaica on that particular airline. Mm -hmm. but, with this, but, but, but Virgin and BA don't have direct flights, as far as I'm aware, from, from those airports. So up north. So, so, um, so these are some of the issues. And it is, you know, just by going around, uh, albeit campaigning, yeah. that uh, I, I was able to sort of pick up on things that um, aren't even being spoken about, but actually are real concerns to Jamaicans mm. on the ground. And that's the whole idea that, you know, and that's what I intend to do if elected uh, for, for the, um, the UK North, uh, is, is to continue going around, visiting Jamaicans wherever they are in, 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 in the various cities up north, Manchester, Leeds, um, Huddersfield, Bradford, and in the Midlands, East and West Midlands, um, and and also Northern Ireland, you know, going going around and meeting them and and listening yes. to their concerns yes. and, and trying to take that back to the government, um, you know. So that's that's how it should work, and you know, um, it's a big job in that sense here yeah, because, of course, there's a lot of travelling. And the role, the role is 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 self financed, you know. Really, you, you, as a mem uh, yes, as a so, member. So, of the so, so, what are you trying to say that um, you are running for one of the council members? Let's build Jamaica together. You're giving up of your time, and there's no yes. fin financial support. No financial support whatsoever. And if you look, and and if you look at the terms of reference. You know, the government makes it clear. So there's not even any ambiguity. Yes. They write, it's written down <laughs> yes. that you, you have to, you know, support yourself, which, you know, uh, some people have argued that maybe th that this needs to be looked at because if you really want someone to, to do the role properly, it involves yeah. a lot of traveling. Yeah, because, no, because, because I, yeah. I think, I think, I know in the Jamaican community, if, if, if you're elected and different members are elected and going to meetings, there are meetings there. Uh, Jamaicans are very, you know, of course, one thing for sure, you wouldn't worry about food because they cook all the food already, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's one thing yeah. you wouldn't worry about. But I, I, I'm sure, and this was something which was discussed many years ago, I believe, about ways how to finance the whole thing. So I'm sure that won't be a big issue. But ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, Kevin, because you came on and to, to give us some information on this whole um, project, and especially with, yes. in regards to your role, I will have to make sure that I make myself available for other um, nominees, other, can not other candidates to come. <laughs> well, <with>. yes. <laughs> so, so if you know of them as well. I'm, I'm sure you'll be lobbied on that, yes. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, if so, when, whenever you know of other person, just say that I'm giving the platform over to them as well um, for them to absolutely, campaign. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and just in, in a nutshell, give us your three or four key points um, as to why people should vote for you when the the time is right, when the time comes. Well, well, yeah. Well, thank you, Silver, for having me on tonight um, and for this opportunity. Um, well, you know, I came to this country 19 years ago um, as, as a as a as a Jamaican. Um, you know, I was born and bred in Jamaica, grew up there uh, and, uh, you know, um, enjoyed my time in Jamaica, but I came to the UK to, to study. But, uh, but my, my, my roots in the UK uh, uh, extend way beyond 19 years. My grandfather came to this country in, in the 1950s and settled in the north of England in, in Yorkshire uh, with my grandmother. And they stayed there uh, mm -hmm. until uh, the 1990s when they returned uh, permanently to Jamaica. So, you know, I see myself as a, a son of the, the north of England, uh, you know, and I currently live in the Midlands. Uh, and so hence, I think, you know, hence why, you know, for me, I'm excited about running uh, as the member of, 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 the, for the, of the council for the north of the UK. And I have been uh, involved in the community um, for a long time, um, you know, um, whether it, 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 it in, in various roles, really. Um, first, uh, you know, mentoring um, black boys, uh, trying to encourage them um, in terms of education and um, uh, their uh, career aspirations. Um, I've worked with several voluntary organizations um, in, in various roles, um, you know, uh, trying to, to get those organizations um, up, up and running 
and, and supporting various Jamaican uh, groups. And I've been a part of the Diaspora Project, if I could call it that, yes. um, uh, since uh, you know, 2006, first as a youth leader. I know I'm not so young anymore, but mm -hmm. uh, currently uh, the chairman of the Jamaican Diaspora UK. And, and so all these um, uh, roles and, and involvements that I've had uh, have certainly allowed me to understand the issues that affect uh, Jamaicans. Um, you know, and we ha I have been lobbying um, uh, on behalf of the Jamaican community yes. around issues uh, concerning immigration, deportation, safety of returning residents, um, uh, you know, and, and a whole raft of other, other things. So I would like the opportunity to continue to do that work um, uh, and to be part of this council. And, uh, you know, I, I would encourage everyone to, to support me, uh, but more importantly, to support the process yes. because your, your vote matters. Even if you, you know, whoever you vote for, the key thing now is for Jamaicans to understand that uh, it's not just about sending remittances uh, anymore. I want to have a conversation, for example, around whether people in the diaspora should have the right to vote in general elections in Jamaica. Over 90, over 90 countries, Silburn, yes. in the world already allow their diaspora communities to vote. And you, so you, you, know, you know what? Yeah. I, I, so. I sort of stopped talking about that because I remember I brought that on the floor of the diaspora conference twice consecutive years. At one point, Danville Walker was the director of elections one time. And I remember Delano calling me and I was in the bathroom upstairs at the where we're in J Jamaica that was taking up pee. And Delano, like, where's Silver? Where's Silver? Because I brought up it all on, on the floor, you know. And, and yeah. every time, every time, Kevin, that issue is brought up at, at any Jamaica diaspora conference, um, it is like it's a fresh thing. And I always say this, it is better the government of Jamaica just to make a decision instead of keep prolonging it as if it is something new, just to make a decision by yeah. bringing all the strands together and just say yes or no. But as you rightly say, right now in the UK, I was, I was, South Africa was having their election recently. I was at a meeting, a business meeting, and there was a South African guy came in and said, sorry to be late. Guess where he was? He was at the embassy, the, the, the high commission for South Africa. Just yeah. voting. Voting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, I, so I want to have a conversation around it. I, I, you know, I, what, I, what I want to do is have a debate and, and for us to really assess the feasibility. Yes. Because as I said, over 90 countries already do it. Yes. Maybe because of Jamaica's parliamentary system, it might be challenging. Yes. You know, maybe, maybe it would have been easier if you had an executive president yeah. system. Yeah. But, but, but we'll see. I mean, these are things I want to look at. And very quickly, Silburn, yeah. the other things I wanted to, to sort of take forward uh, to the council are issues around Brexit. Yes. What are the implications of Brexit for Jamaicans living in the UK, but also for Jamaica? Yes. You know, um, and, and so we, we really need to look at this, uh, you know, carefully and try and understand what are the implications and what actions we should be taking. Um, and also, um, <clears throat> the, as I said earlier, um, you know, the, there's a whole thing of looking at um, airline services, um, you know, direct flights from airports in the north. Uh, I, I want to focus on youth engagement because I think this is going to be absolutely crucial. You know, I was, I was, at, a, I was at an event um, recently, over 100 um, plus Jamaicans, bona fide Jamaicans yes. in the north. Um, and, and I think I was the youngest person there. Mm. You know, and I'm not so young anymore. So, you know, we, we have a, a lovely Jamaican community, um, but it's an aging Jamaican community. And, and we really, really now need to give youth engagement the focus that it needs. We now need to look at uh, intergenerational handover, you know, um, you know and, 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 and that's just the reality. We have to accept that the time, times are changing. Um, we are getting older and we now need to look at um, uh, young people. Now, of course, things are complicated because who, how you define a Jamaican, especially in the, in the current generation, is not so straightforward yes. because we have mixed heritage Jamaicans, etc. But whatever the case, you can cook ackee and selfish, man. 
<laughs> you'd use cuisine. You'd use cuisine. I mean, yes, but but you know, but the fact is, if you have Jamaican heritage, you should be part of the Jamaican yes. diaspora yeah. project. You know, yeah. you should be involved. Yeah. You should be involved in your local Jamaican community organization. And and I'm just saying to our elders, we need to now make space for young people to do that. Fantastic. Um, yeah. and, and so yes. So, so yes, yeah, so I know time is time is tight, um, Silburn, yes. and I want to just thank you very much for the opportunity and to encourage everyone to register to vote. Yes. It's uh, it closing on the seventeenth, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully I'll have your support um, going forward um, as I campaign to yes. be the council member for the uh, another north of uh, the UK, yeah. which includes the the Midlands. So, ladies and gentlemen, as as we're talking about the global Jamaica diaspora council elections. Um, registration of the voters began, began on 25th of October and that's correct, yes? The nomination began on the 10th of November. Yeah, that's correct. 17th of November, nomination ends. 17th of November, the end of voter registration. 20th of November, publication of the final voters list. And then on the 20th of November, you'll have the list of all the candidates for the election of which Kevin will be won. And can we recall anyone, Kevin? Can we recall anyone if they misbehave? <laughs> Have you got a process <laughs> where people can be recalled? That's a good question. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I, I need to review the terms of reference. But from my recollection, I think the 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 the, the minister <clears throat> there's, a, you know, within the terms of reference, there there are certain behavioral expectations. Yes. Uh, and I think the minister can. Um, yeah, make a, make an minute. executive yeah. decision or something like that. I think so. Yes, to be a you know, but, but I, I don't, but I don't, I don't recall seeing any provision. Yes, for the constituents to, to recall you, but I think, I think the council through the minister can. Yeah, because it's for a three-year period. You're serving a term of three years, isn't it? It's a three-year period. Three years. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, so that's the thing. Um, you give your details. Um, in order to sign up, I, I put the website on this thread which I was doing, and also. Just to be assured, and this is what it says, that your details will be kept up to the end of the elections process, right? So yeah. the question is asked, how long will the data collected be stored? Right? Because when you're registering, you're going to see it asking you for your address, your postcode. Um, and that is in order for persons to know where you are, what region you're from. Because Kevin is in the north. Exactly. And then people are in the south. And what it says? The information will be collected during registration, will be held up to the end of the election process. So therefore, the level of assurance is that your detail will not be used after. Am I correct? That's what it says. That's correct. Yes. 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 Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on and thank Kevin so much for coming on. And Kevin, of course, we'll have to somehow let other candidates and i'm going to try even get david mullins as well to give a bigger picture because persons need to somewhat um be cognizant yeah. of what is happening and how their voice can be translated to jamaica am i correct yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. you know as i said it's very very important that we play a, a more significant role yes. um and, you know and and make a contribution yeah. to jamaica uh, beyond just re re remittances we've gone past that now we did. the government has written a, a diaspora policy mm -hmm. and that is now going through a process of ratification and yes. we want to make sure that it's implemented so you know we need to get involved um uh, as much as we can okay good all right any last word or that's the last word vote for me well, that was it. I, my last word, really, Silburn, is just to thank you for the opportunity. And, you know, um, you know, I, you know I, I hope that um, people will find, will, will have found this informative, um, you know, and, and just to go on the website. It's packed full of information. That's the global JA diaspora council .com. Yes. That, it's not my website. It's a website created by the government. Um, I mean, the, the diaspora council is a government initiative. Uh, but it's certainly one for us to utilize and to 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 make it make of it what we we wish. And so I'd encourage everyone to participate in uh, the elections, register to vote, uh, get nominated or nominate someone and, uh, and and vote. And and certainly, you know, Jamaica is our rock. Yes, it, it, it's not perfect, but at the same time, there's a lot to celebrate as well. The best stock exchange in the world, the highest performing yes. stock exchange in the world. The Jamaican flag was being flown on Wall Street yes. 
right? Because of that fact, uh, of the, you, know, uh, you know, we have a a growing tourism sector. I mean, and, the tourism and, and sector we've got a, we've got a there's phenomenal. Brand, Jamaica, because uh, Kofi, absolutely, Kofi um, Toast was being played in China with the opera, the classical thing. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. You know, we, we, we... I mean, look, I, I I have been fortunate enough to travel around the world, and you know, everywhere I, I've been. Jamaica has some presence. I remember going to Japan and I went into the store and all this so they were selling there was just Jamaican paraphernalia, yes. right? So, you know, we have a very strong brand in terms of track and field. We are, you know, top of the class. Um, and, and and so the, the, the only other challenges we have now that, that we, I think we, we can fix, you know, are issues around um, growth of the economy and Criminality. Criminality. You know what? Okay. Yeah. Okay. On that note, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on. And and um and finally, again, don't say nothing, but you will make sure you'll have um the process for persons to be impeached and recall, yeah? <laughs> I'm following the instructions, I'm not saying anything. All right, see you later, Kevin. All the best, yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Cheers. 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 Okay. I just got a message a while ago that I earned many things. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for that and uh, for coming on. And uh, it's important with the diaspora. The, the, you see, as I was speaking with Kevin a while ago, um, whenever you have a minister of government who is in the country, Andrew Holness, Portia Simpson, uh, at the time has been prime ministers, uh, government ministers, there's a massive uh, convocation or assembly of Jamaicans who come and want to hear. And they come with questions, legitimate questions, but the, the, the prime minister, they can't answer all of them, but here's a vehicle. Uh, here's a vehicle that can be used, this vehicle that can be used once it is set in place properly with this council, right? Once it is set in place with this council where persons can actually use it as a vehicle whereby they can somewhat engage with the government of Jamaica through the structure. The Global Jamaica Diaspora Council will be the successor body to the Diaspora Advisory Board, which comprised of members from only the traditional diaspora destinations of Canada, UK, and USA. It is a more inclusive and expansive diaspora engagement mechanism will serve as a major tool for diaspora outreach across the world. So I'm going to encourage you to, to get involved with the process. I have placed the, the, the address here, the website, where you can actually tap into and register global jamaica diaspora council.com and uh, kevin brown is one of the candidates who is going to stand for election to be a part of the council you've got the north you've got the south and of course in the states you also have the same thing happening and what i'm going to do is um offer my platform for the other candidates that they can come and they can also share as well and so so yeah let me hear what you think about it. Let me hear if it is something, what you've heard about the diaspora before. What do you think about the diaspora? Um, just drop something. If you, if you see this on a replay, I'm going to put it on YouTube. Let me hear what your thoughts about it. And um, remember what I said. Many people are saying, what are they going to do with the information? Well, we've got the assurance that the information that you gave with your address and your postcode, what will happen? They will um, get rid of that detail after, after the elections. Okay? So, thank persons for coming. Thank you. Um, Kevin, um, David Burton, hey, Danette Gale, V, Christian Light, um, June Daly, Nadine Thomas, Monica Smith, Ted Anson's Ambassador and Alun Asamba, and of course, Ambassador Alun was one of the key persons in building up and encouraging persons to be um, involved in getting their stay, getting their paperwork, because I believe that a strong diaspora organization really structured would not allow something like the uh, Windrush fiasco to take place. So we got to stop those things. Kathy Stevenson, thank you so much. Angela Beeson, um, you're saying um, true. Immigration is so important. Got to respect if you're consistent. Involuntary return. Mecca Incorp has taken on the task of preventing homelessness among people who are returned unprepared to Jamaica. Right. And Lyndon Wizard. I've seen those MPs on the same platform standing side by side. 
Monica Smith, I like what I'm hearing. So true. And um, Deborah Harrison, Angela Wilson, Gregory, my virgin from Jamaica, straight out the yard. Sir Tony Kelly, Kwame, Monica Smith, Carol, Karina Rose, Martin Anderson, my cousin, Christopher Murphy, David Burton, final word. Great hearing from you both. Thanks for the update regarding the Global Diaspora Project. Okay, so, so on that note, um, I will say I'll take leave now. And of course, follow me as I get on to the next election watch. And that election watch talking about um, the general election, December the 12th in the UK. So the election I was talking about wasn't the general election, it was the Global Diaspora Council, Jamaica. But we have our next election, which is 12th of December, where we'll have the next Prime Minister, next government, to sort out this Brexit fiasco and get the country moving. Okay? Have a good night and enjoy the Friday night wherever you are. I know some of you in Jamaica, the States, and peace out. Thank you. Remember to share this video. I want to see lots of shares as well. Peace out. <laughs>